Hi Divas! I have a working video today that I'd like to show you how I'm doing. This is one of the special kits. It's called Diamond Drawing and there are several of these type of kits. This one happens to have a church on the, on the back of it. I haven't made this one yet. I'm going to be using this very lightweight pen by Star Ore and it has a little um, deer on the top and these look like snowflakes since it is uh, snowing a little outside and since I'm cold that's why I'm wearing these finger lit um, just finger lit uh, I don't know what you call them cuffs they're not gloves because they don't go over my fingers but uh, I'm going to be wearing these until they start annoying me while I'm working and <laughs> then they'll go off but I'm going to be using just the regular pink wax from uh, Diamond this is from Dreamer Design uh, they're special band branded of uh, wax, but it's just regular pink wax in there. If you want, I still have some snowflake, some peppermint snowflake cover minders that you can magnetize. You, there's magnets that you put one under your work and one on top of your work, and <clears throat> they uh, have blue wax in them and they smell like peppermint on the inside. So. These, I still have some of those in my in my Etsy shop. Wanda's work basket at Etsy.com. Okay, so let's begin. Let's see what's in a kit like this. This is could be as part of a, an advanced class. I wouldn't work on these first thing because they take a little finesse. Just getting into the package takes a little finesse. Here, all right. It has the instructions on the back. See what a kit looks like. <clears throat> oh, not pretty. All right, I'm going to save the box because in the past one of these that I made broke, and I I cut out the bottom of the package and glued it to the bottom of the item, and that way the bottom don't doesn't split in half when you're working with it. Okay, so I'm going to save that. It comes with the basic kit basic pink wax boat and uh, one placer in there, but I'm not going to use that. All right. Comes in the typical drill train. And these are the gems that are in it. Let me do it on the back side here. You can see them better this way, I think. Move up closer to you. On the front, these all have the letter, letter A, which I'm sure is going to be on here as the letter. It says the, does it say the kit number? The LT, no, LT006, I guess, is their kit number. And some other numbers, but at least it has the number on it that you need to correspond to what's in the kit to do. Alright, I have my stack, my stacker here, that I'm going to put all the drills in the stacker so that it's easy to get to. And I'll have to label them with a, like a pencil or something so I know which is which. But usually I work on one thing at a time. I may not need this after all. I may just need my my wax stick. One of the wax sticks. I just sharpen the end and it's good to go. I like to use these with gems. I have some of these in my Etsy shop too. I can get two of them at a time. I like to use these with gems because they don't scratch the surface of the gem. They pick it up. It's like this kind of wax. It's a little stiffer, but it's in a pencil form. And with a little bit of working, you can even get a squishy around it so that it helps your fingers and it doesn't break if you press a little hard on it. They don't smell good like my waxes, but hey, can't have everything, right? All right. Let's look at this little thing. 
This one's smaller than my others. You want to see the others that, that have the broken bottoms on it that I haven't fixed yet? Let me get them. One the bottom broke and one the other one did not break. Okay, so they were a little bigger. This one is a Victorian house. Okay. This one is the Victorian house. Okay, it has some gates on it. It's got a, a fruit tree with all kinds of little baubles on it. And a Victorian house in the back. You can see that they're on, they're in slots that are made just for that item. So you can't place them in the wrong place. This one is not broken. However, I'm going to put a backing on the bottom anyway because I don't want it to uh, break in the future like the other one does, did. <clears throat> Please excuse me. All right, this is the broken one. It broke right in the center here. Right where these two slits for the angels go. Can you see that? Obviously you can. All right, it would have been like this. With one angel on one side. And the other angel on the other side. Lay that along here. Maybe I can actually put this one lay it on here too. And it's got a Greek Orthodox church in the background. So obviously, if I want this to actually sit around at a Christmas time when I have these angels, I am going to need to fix the bottom. So that's the only caution I have when getting these kits. Is that sometimes they break. <laughs> Sometimes they break. But you have, just need a little ingenuity, a little creativity, and you can get it back to back in action. Alright, so this one has a snow bottom, snow covered bottom. It comes with a, a church, a regular church, not an orthodox church. It comes with a large angel with the Christmas tree. It comes with a small angel and another small angel and they look like they're putting something on top of a tree and it comes with a tiny Christmas tree. So that ought to be fun to work on, not? It ought to be. I think it'll be fun. So I'm going to put the base away because that's the last thing we use. I'm going to spread these items out because I like to work on one item for all of it at the same time. My process is, with any of these with special kits or special items, and I'm really getting that uh, glare from that, aren't I? Sorry. Let's see if I can telephoto you in a little bit more and go up here with that glare. All right. I like to... Uh, mm. We're not working. I like to find the specials, the biggest ones first, and then put the little ones around it because it, um, I guess I need a scissors too. Golly gee. <clears throat> I just don't like to wrestle the big ones in after the little ones are in. I just, you just never know about these uh, things. So, okay. What I'm going to do is open this one. I'm going to pour them in here, and then I'm going to... See the symbol on that? I'm going to cut the symbol out and lay that in sort of like under those drills. That way I still have that identified as to what drill number they are. 
right? And that little bits are trash. Now, these are A's, so what I want to do is go around on each of the items. These have the plastic coating over top of them. You have to peel that back. The sticky is underneath it, just, just where the drills are needed. I'm going to use this because that just works best for me. Shaking up the drills, getting one on there, and plopping it down right where it's needed. See, I'm going to try to do that again where you can see me. See? One of the things that I do when I pick up a drill is I don't pick it up straight down head on like that. Because that's the way you're going to have to put it back down on this. And it's hard to see when you're looking straight down on it if you've got it straight or not. I like to pick it up in an angle so that you can still see most of the dot. And you know exactly where you're putting it down. You can see exactly where it's going to lay. Okay. And I'm just going to straighten all these up because a couple of them, I just want to make sure that they're all in their own spot. <clears throat> you can move them just slightly um, shortly after you put them down. Don't forget, grab your cup of tea or your other favorite beverage and work along with me. This whip, this work in progress video, I do not just to chat and hear myself talk, but I do it to teach a little bit because as I walk along here, I'll find some things that I would like to say about the project. Also, it's kind of fun to let you know where let you know where I am in my life because I love to hear about your life. My first question to you that I would love for you to put down in the comments is do you do any special kits? What kits are they? Did you do a bookmark or a journal or a little scene like this? Did you do keychains? Did you make your own with your extra diamonds? I would love to hear about your special project. Okay, those are the A's on this one. I'm going to cover that back up. Move that to the side. And I see A's in the Christmas trees as well. So. I'll peel back the film <laughs> and do the same. Pick it up on the side, drop it down right over the right over the mark there. Gently push it. If you miss the spot, which I do occasionally, just push it around until it seats and it covers the circle that's there. These special kits often have what they call training wheels or guide circles. You see that around the H, maybe you can see that around the H's in here. You can see a circle around it just so that you know where to place it. The A's are done on this one. I'll show you on this one, you can see the guide circles across the bottom, can't you? Sometimes they're called training wheels, but on these special kits, it's very important to know exactly where the dots go because they're not in a symmetrical row, symmetrical design, like you find in major kits. Okay, again. I'm going to bring it in just a little bit more if I can. Yeah. You can see better what I'm doing here. So if I pick them up at a at a side, my pencil, my pen is not getting in the way of seeing where I need to put them down. See how that is? It says here in the fine print. <laughs> I only know this by a lot of trial and error. <laughs> Because I make the mistakes so you don't have to. I like to put special kits in um, 
in with the prize boxes and with the giveaway boxes. So if you haven't signed up for the giveaway boxes, you need to subscribe. You need to be a subscriber and you need to fill out a member questionnaire at the very bottom of the, the uh, description box. In the description box you will find a thing that says member questionnaire. Fill that out. Email it back to me at wandasworkbasket at gmail.com and you will be entered into the contest. I will send you a note back saying I got it, thank you. And that way you will know that you are entered into the contest. I'll let you know later in another video when I'm going to be giving away the next giveaway. It will be in March sometime, but I'm not telling you when just yet. You gotta watch and see. You never know what video and where in that video I am going to announce the next giveaway. I have full drill kits square and round. I have lots of different styles. <clears throat> and by the way, those membership questionnaires help me to figure out what you like and what you don't like. I do not ever give them the information away, so it's safe with me. Okay, these are H. I picked that because that's the next biggest one on some of these it's the same size as the others I see, but they're, the circles are just about as big. The next one I'm going to do is the gold ones and the T's here. Okay, this is the letter H. The cross at the top of the church is the letter H. I peel back the film one at a time. The film has to stay peeled back in order for you to stick it down. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then I'm going to peel this back. And do the H's on this tree. They always give you way, way, way many more than you need. And just when you're doing this, I would make sure that after you put them down, that's completely covering that little circle that it's meant to be on. You don't want that kind of stuff showing. Um, you have a moment or two after you place it down where it's still flexible enough to move it around. See, like that one. Let's push that back into place here. All right. I like these special kits because not just because they're a neat break from doing a big project, which they are. I apologize for that. My camera ran out. <laughs> so what I wanted to show you is in this church that I've done in between. I got all the red done, um, which I'll show you in a moment. And these are the golds that I put around the windows here. That was the letter H, I believe. And uh, the other number I got done was the little Christmas tree here. And the reds on the rest of the Christmas tree here. That's what I was doing when you couldn't see it off camera. I am so sorry for that. Yeah. And uh, I was saying that I love doing these special kits in between the really big kits because it's just a special break. It's um, a break in the action. It kind of like renews your, uh, your love for diamond painting and it renews your desire to keep going on it. So this is the reds on the little girl. And I noticed that the little girl also has some very special tear shaped ones right in her belt area here. Teardrop or raindrop size. 
So the next one I opened up is Y, and I'm going to put that around her belt. Now, I was saying, too, that there are many different shapes of these specials. And that you have a, an instance, a time to move them, a little bit of time to move them right when you are working on them. These types of, um, the type of glue here is sticky for a short period of time. I, like, you know, it hardens up when it's exposed to the air. And it's exposed to the air while you're working on it. So, okay, only around that little belt, see, are the teardrop shapes. And I have all of these left over, which make for wonderful projects on their own. And I don't remember, did I show you if this tree was done or not? That I look on top of it, I look at the top to see if they're all on straight because when you're working on it you're working on it on the side and it's not always easy to see if you've got it in the right place so you take advantage of that little time window that you have to straighten them out on there I mean it's not real short I mean it could be like an hour or so whatever Otherwise, you have to pop them off and um, put special glue underneath it. And I did, you get to see the part where I showed you special glues. I use Aileen's Jewelit a lot. I use Tombow Aqua Liquid Glue. If I really want them to stick on a special project, I use the B7000 or the E6000. Just make sure you're using a fan at the same time because they really smell, whew, smell toxic. All right, so the next one down. Let's see the color. Oh, all right. These are O's. And I believe these O's are at the bottom of the church, and that's what I'm going to do next. All right. These are neat. They're like a yellow, a yellow iridescent to them. Yeah, they've got a, a special shine on them for sure. They're beautiful. I'm going to love using them in a different project. There we go. <coughs> All right. All right. Commence the royalty-free YouTube music.
that's all there was needed at the bottom here. I'm gonna check that out. Oh, I love those straight lines. I love it when a straight the straight lines work together. And there's one more packet of goodies, and this is the big one. The one that everything is outlined in. <clears throat> I don't really need to put the that one there. This is the last one. All right. Yeah. Well, which one should I do first? I think I'll do the church. Finish that up. Then I'll do the, the big angel, then the little two angels. So, do you see any diamond painting classes um, coming up in your area? What special kits have you worked on, special projects or kits? Have you done any freestyle things, which means that you just did your own thing? <laughs> if you find uh, something you like, like in a... Uh, I don't know, cross stitch pattern. I'm going to be doing that as part of an advanced class on one of the weeks. Changing a cross stitch pattern into a diamond painting. They're easy because they have the DMC numbers already uh, marked out because DMC is originally a thread company and the thread the embroidery thread that you use is numbered, the colors are numbered, and they use the same DMC numbers for the colors of the drills. So it's easy to transfer a cross stitch pattern into a into a diamond painting that way. And I'll do a video on the one I'm doing and that'll be, you know, Part of an advanced class as well as teaching you how to do that on a small scale. You can do it as big a scale as you'd like, but I'm going to do it on a small scale to begin with. Okay. Am I still doing this on camera? <laughs> I don't want to slide off like I did in the last section. Huh. I really thought I was doing it on camera. So yeah, um, that's 
that's going well. The job is going well. I like the girls that I work with. I really do. There are some people who are so sweet, I mean, over the phone, that, that they have, even in the midst of all their troubles, that they have to get in touch with the doctor or if they don't have any heat in the house or whatever, they need some um, some quick not saving, but you know, they need some a quick resolution to their problems and you are connecting them with that the company that can help them resolve their problem um, or doctor's office or whomever some people can be very, very sweet and say, well, I'm sorry to bother you, but this, that, and the other thing. And then you have a few that are very uh, irate. There are certain things that the companies that hire answering services, they have certain criteria they want you to go by. Like they will accept calls from this type, people who need this or that type and not others. Some companies say, okay, if they go out to emergencies on people they don't know, like new customers. And I imagine that's how you make new customers, and especially in the winter months. And then you have to tell some that I'm sorry that company does not deal with new customers uh, until you've you know, created an account with them over the business day. And usually things go wrong on what? On the weekends and holidays when uh, everybody's on call. It's not like a lot of us plan ahead, right? <laughs> People plan ahead. If you need your utilities, if you know it's going to be, um, you know, difficult weekend or coming up, like bad weather, or if you know, you know, if you're sick during the middle of the week, or if you know you need your prescriptions refilled, look at them at the beginning of the week. Contact your doctor's office when they're in, during the beginning of the week, so that you can get it to the, you have enough to last you, you know, I know some insurances don't allow you to have too much of it on hand, they make you wait until the very last minute to get to get the prescriptions filled again. But if it's one that you can have extra on hand, please do. Don't wait until the weekend when you're all out of a prescription to call the doctor's office to get a refill done. A lot of doctor's offices do not work on a weekend and their doctors don't have the ability to get into absolutely everything for every patient at home with them when they're on call. So it makes it extremely difficult for them to help you. So my advice is get that stuff done the beginning of the week. Give the doctor's offices enough time to get the prescription where they need to be, to get your test, you know, instructions to you in enough time to have the test done. Please. You know, some people call on the weekend and they expect miracles and it's like, I'm sorry, that can't happen. The uh, companies or businesses or offices tell us they'll only accept calls from this, that, and the other thing. If you know you're close to having your utilities shut off, Get that taken care of the beginning of the week. So over the weekend, you don't get it shut off and have to call and be very irritated when they can't help you over the weekend. Because the answering service is the one that's going to catch the brunt of that, not the doctor's office. And you are contacting someone and an answering service answers, please be polite. They are only doing as they are told by the customer who engages them, okay? They do not work directly for the company you are calling. 
So you can be as irate as you'd like to be, um, but there's nothing that the, the operator can do for you. And I have to make mention of COVID because, all right, I'm not claiming any medical advice. I'm not claiming to know any medical advice, so do not take this as medical advice. But let me tell you, though, that a lot of doctor's offices do not have the ability to get test kits for you or schedule a COVID test during out-of-office hours if you have symptoms that you can't manage, if you're getting a sinus infection or an ear infection or something like that, yes, call the doctor. Some have developed strep throat as part of it. Yes, call the doctor then. They can help you with those prescriptions. But if it's just normal COVID signs, there's nothing the doctor can do to help you over the phone. They can't test you over the phone. They can't call in a prescription for a flu over the phone. And please get your shots, your booster shots. Please get that done. You will avoid giving it to other people. You can still get it. I've learned since that you can still get it when you're shot, you know, you have the shots and booster shots and everything. But you don't get it as severe as someone who doesn't have any. And it's just common sense. Don't spread it around, people. <clears throat> if you don't have your shots, don't take off your mask at work or at play. Don't visit your germs onto people who have gotten their booster shots and keep their mask on in public. I'm sorry if I'm going to lose a few viewer viewers over that, but I'm telling you the truth. And don't call your doctor's office on weekends with symptoms that you started to get during the week and then call into your doctor. Don't expect miracles where none can happen. Okay, please, if you have to, fine, but don't be irate with the operator who, number one, does not have any medical advice to give you. Number two, is working for the company that is hired by the office you're trying to reach that is following their instructions. Okay. If you have a problem with the company you are calling and you get an answering service, wait till business hours and call the people directly. You're not going to get a problem resolved by an operator on uh, an answering service. You just aren't. We try to be as happy and um, caregiving as we possibly can. But if you're going to, you know, I, every shift, every shift there's somebody who curses me out because I'm following what I am told to do. Okay? Nothing against you as a caller. But please bear in mind those things. I wish more people would have to, you know, spend a year at a call center like that or a year in retailing then you guys, the, the ones that think they have all the problems and have all the privileges and demand this and demand that, that are against the rules, that they have to be, you know, special just for you. I think if you work in retailing or a doctor's office or um, <clears throat> some on-call thing or some answering service, something like that, in a service profession... 
you will understand. You will come to understand that it's not all about you. <laughs> I hate to say that, but it's not all about you. This one got stuck in the middle, so I'm taking it out here. There. Do not demand extra above and beyond because it's just not possible. Take your complaints up with the actual company during the week when something can be done about it. Companies and people do not change unless you tell them what's wrong. If you are afraid of confrontation and do not tell them what's wrong and would rather um, be cranky with an operator who has no bearing on whatever you need, no influence at all, no change is going to happen. If you have upset with the company, call the company during the week when you can get some satisfaction. Not an operator on the weekend is just trying to make a buck to pay off their car and keep their cable bill on. Now, I'm sorry if that's harsh, but that's just the way it is. Be kind. If you're upset, there are things that you can, way different ways of saying things that still get your point across assertively without cursing and ranting and raving. That, that'll just get you hung up on. That will just get you nowhere. That will just get you labeled by the company as difficult. That will just get you, you know, move to a do not answer position. Not by the answering service, but by, you know, the company. If you're irate with the company and don't do it in, a, in an assertive way, even though you're upset, the company is not going to listen to you not going to take your complaints seriously. I'm, I'm just, you know, giving you some advice on how to get along <laughs> in this world with companies that are not giving you the service that you think they, they should. I'm getting too many on upside down, which means I need to spread these out a bit. Put too many in a tray, it's difficult to uh, pick them up correctly. And these are not sitting right. Right, I'm almost done the little church. <laughs> yeah, I just I think everybody should spend some time in a service position so that they know, you will know what you sound like on the phone to others and you will be kind to those who are working behind the desk who are trying to serve you are doing their best to pay off their bills and not live off the government who really want to be kind and want to help you and want to be there for you in your difficult times you know, the kinder you are to service people, the better service you're going to get. Just saying. Whether it's a waitress, or a nurse, or an operator, or a retail associate, the kinder you are to these people that serve you, the better service you're going to get. Okay? Just saying. Alright, what I'm doing is I'm checking to make sure things are aligned as I like them to be. That they're covering over the 
the area that tells you where to put them down. Yeah. All right, I think that one's done. <clears throat> so far I have a tree and the church done. Let's get this big angel done, okay? Why not? Let's work on the tree first and then we'll go do the rest of the angel here. If that will stay back. <clears throat> what else do I want to tell you? My mother had COVID over the holidays, right after the holidays, I should say. But none of us got it. None of the rest of us who had dinner together with the family got it. Fortunately, I hope that you didn't have to go through that. I hope that you and your family were free of COVID. Uh, my mother did well. She came out of it well. She didn't have very bad symptoms. Of course, she's all vaccinated and boosted too. Uh. <clears throat> my grand's my grandson had it though. He tasted negative for a while, then he was positive for a while, and he stayed home for a bit. Both of the kids had to stay home because when you live with someone, when you're a child and you live with someone who has COVID, you're home too, just in case, so that you don't spread it around the school. Which I think is a great idea. You don't spread it to the other kids or the teachers there. There are plenty of teachers out and substitutes in who are who contract COVID while they're in school. But I gotta tell you, schools are some of the cleanest places to send your kids right now. Um, they have a lot of measures in place like sanitizing the desks in between classes like um, contact tracing, which means they know who sits at what desk when, so they know who was around them. If the, somebody contracts COVID, those who were at that desk, even if it's different, you know, a different period than yours, um, they, they know who your child has been around for the most part and can tell them ahead of time, like, hey, watch out for these symptoms. And now the kids can get vaccinated. Get your kids vaccinated too, please. It's harder on, it seems to be harder on kids now. They haven't built up the immune systems that adults have. You know, when I was growing up, there was this funny saying that, that, Kids have to eat a little bit of dirt to be healthy when you're an adult. <laughs> and I think it's true. I think, you know, kids who... This is going to sound gross, but... Kids who pick their noses and play in mud puddles and, you know, get outside and breathe the fresh air and... Uh, <laughs> You know, whatever, make mud pies, play in the mud, whatever. Uh, go to birthday parties where somebody blows the candles out on the cake, things like that. I mean, gee, they get more immunities, more natural immunities that when you're a kid, so that when you're an adult, you can handle some of these things. It was, it's funny, but when I was growing up, okay, 60s and 70s, my parents were told at that point that if one sibling or a friend 
gets the chicken pox or something like that, the mumps, whatever, measles, whatever it was, you would send your kids there. <laughs> you would keep them close together with your kids so that they could all get them over with at once. It's just funny. I mean, it was true. That way you build up the immunity and you won't have any problems with it later. Now they're finding out shingles is the chicken pox virus. So that may be out of the... Out of the uh, Um, out of the lineup of go catch it from your friend so we can all get it over with. But I don't know. Did your, did your parents ever say anything like that to you? That you've got to eat a little dirt to be healthy or you know, you've got to be playing outside and getting dirty to be healthy? Uh, that if your friend got a non-lethal disease, but annoying disease, to um, go play with that kid or that sibling, not quarantine yourself off from them, so that you can build up immunities to it? I don't know. I wouldn't do that with COVID. <clears throat> I would not do that with COVID. Because it could be lethal. Because it could be lethal. But it was, uh, it was, <laughs> I remember I had the mumps and I was laying on the couch and my parents had um, friends over and <laughs> they had to ask the friends did you have the mumps um, my daughter's contagious and blah 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 it was too funny and I remember laying on the couch watching TV <laughs> there used to be a show in the 60's called The Prisoner and you could see it on you know some of the, the channels that like to do old-time things. And it was a guy who was a spy or an agent of some kind, British. And in retirement, they send him to this village where everything is perfect, but you can't get off of it. It's an island. And if you try to escape... This big bubble thing would be sent after you. It would bounce and bounce and bounce over the fields and, you know, chase you until it would envelop you and take you back to the island. And uh, it was really a mod 60s type of feel. You know, the, the chairs that are the circles that you would sit in and it would turn around and it would just, like, envelop you. It's just so funny. And the, the skinny ties and skinny lapels and just the cars that they drove oh my gosh it was just so much fun to watch my dad and I liked spy movies and TV shows so uh, we used to watch those together they were so much fun so I just remember laying there on the couch do you remember when it, when you were sick as a kid how you were uh, what you were doing when you were recovering at night if I was getting sick and it was a weekend night my mom would make me a hot toddy you know what that is some of you do do you know what a hot toddy is let us know down below if you've ever had a hot toddy a hot toddy is a cup of tea you know already I like that, right? <clears throat> Strong tea. With honey and lemon in it. Okay. That's what helped to ease your throat pain. And <laughs> a natural um, a natural 
painkiller, <laughs> a natural uh, way to just make you not care anymore or get you sleepy is to put some alcohol in it. <laughs> some brandy or some whiskey. I think we always had some whiskey around because when we were little and teething they used to tell you to put a little rub a little whiskey on their gums. You know the safety measures and stuff that people take now a days it's just so funny. I mean how did we survive our childhood? <laughs> How did we survive our childhood with all these things, with eating dirt and getting, you know, sharing the chicken pop pox and mumps and drinking a little whiskey or wine with dinner or when you're sick? I mean, gee whiz. The doctor, I had anemia when I was little, okay? And when I was young, this was before puberty, so I'm just never sure why I had anemia except that it might run in the family and all that stuff. Anyway, the prescription for that? A shot of port wine every night before bed. <laughs> I still love port wine. At that time, I really didn't like it because it burned on the way down. So I get whiskey when I was sick. I get port, a little glass of port wine before I went to bed. It stopped all the restlessness and the anxiety and you know made me sleepy. It wasn't enough to be to do any damage. At least they didn't think so at the time. Maybe that's why I've lost some brain cells now, right? I don't know. But, you know, how did we survive our childhood without car seats, without seat belts even, without cell phones, with, you know, going out and having fun and getting soaking wet in the snow having to come in and throw our wet boots and, and scarves and mittens and stuff near the fireplace so that they would dry and we would sit and have hot cocoa afterward. I miss those days. You know, I tried to do that with my kids. I tried to go out and make a snowman with them. In the summers I'd go out and try to find fireflies with them so they can watch them in the bottle. Or, you know, if we found the toads and we caught toads, we would feed them fireflies so their bellies would light up. Just so funny. Didn't mean to go on a nostalgic rant here. I remember a lot from my childhood. What, what's the first memory that you have as a child? Do you remember anything as a child? I actually remember something from when I was an infant. And don't say that's not, that can't happen. Because I remember looking up at wallpaper. It was so unique. My grandmother had black wallpaper with green ivy leaves on it. Uh, and, I don't know, ivy or grape leaves or something, some kind of leaf. And I would stare at the pattern. You know, you grab your toes and you stare at the pattern. And I remembered that. And I told my mom about it one day. I said, when did, you know, Nana give up her black wallpaper? And she said, well, how do you know about the wallpaper? I said, because I remember it. She said, well, you couldn't. It was off the wall when you before you were born. I said, no, it probably wasn't. She said, because I remember sitting there staring at it. She goes, but that's when you were an infant. I'm like, yeah. I remember a lot from my childhood. There was a lot about it that was wonderful. There's some about it that wasn't wonderful. But I'll get into that in another channel at another time. Right now I want to stick to the good stuff. What were your holidays like this year? Did you get everything back and you're taking your decorations down in January and do you take your tree down the day after or do you leave it up till Epiphany or do you decorate it and keep it up all year long? 
My mom has a white Christmas tree in her dining room that she does that with. She decorates it for Valentine's Day, and then she'll decorate it for Easter, and then she'll decorate it for whatever. It's cute. It's a white artificial tree. 